Hi, it's Lucy here and I'm creating 17 cards, yes 17, with just one roll of PET tape and a couple of background dies today. These tapes are all new from the washi tape shop and aren't they stunning? I wonder if you'll be surprised at which tape I decide to use first. I wasn't even expecting this to be the first one I played with but once I started I just couldn't stop creating more and more cards so... I was also using my fun background dies too again, so it made them super easy to make. Do you have a favourite tape here that you'd love me to create with? I'll be creating with most of them soon, I'm sure. And you know how much I love a discount code and I have a discount code for both the tapes and the dies today and I'll give you that in a minute as well. Okay, so this last tape is the one I'll be creating with today. It's called Mosaic Radiance. As I mentioned, I couldn't stop creating with it, so I decided to use the entire roll and see how many cards I can make and how much the cards would cost to make. And I even have a couple of ideas on what to do with the very last little piece of the tape. So stay tuned because you'll either think I'm a genius or you'll go, yeah, I've seen it before. <laughs> Anyway, so here's just a few of the cards I've made already. I've used two background dies and I'll have product links and, as I mentioned, discount codes for the online stores in case you want to go for a shop. I love how different the cards turn out and yet I've used almost identical items, just maybe a different accent colour or sentiment, etc. We'll see all of these again at the end and I'll let you know of any special tips, tricks on each one as well. But so on to creating a card using this first die. And I'm starting out with a piece of white card that's slightly larger than the die. And that way I know it'll fit. Then I'll add the tape going crossways. And depending on your paper, the tape is difficult to adjust once on the paper. So place it down carefully. The upside to this is that you know it won't move. It's not like the old cheap washi tape that we use to like maybe pop down our dies to keep in place. And then I'm going to add it into my die cutting machine with an extra layer of paper to give it a little extra pressure because it has the tape and the thick paper to go through. And I've also die cut it out of a burnt orange color cardstock. And now I have another piece of the cardstock to use as the base as well. And I'll use my wide double-sided tape, which makes creating these backgrounds so easy. You can use glue or skinnier double-sided tape and a lot of that if you like. I'll add the frame first, then I can start adding each piece, making sure they're in the correct spot, which is why I tried to keep them in place after die cutting them. I love how using the dies with this tape has created a tile type look all the pieces with the tape on them have a gorgeous shiny tile appeal and it looks fabulous I think that's why it's called mosaic it really gives it that mosaic tile type feel so I think using background dies with it is just perfect this is the traditional way of using this die but there's more ways to use it which you'll see at the end or die cut a sentiment to suit and this time I'm creating a landscape card rather than portrait so you can see you can use this die both ways. I've also made a video using this die and creating lots of masculine style cards too. I find it's perfect for all types of cards. Okay next we're using another one of my favorite background dies and I've also used this in a previous video with lots of examples too. But today I'm creating them all with the same gorgeous PET tape, but they all turn out different. So let's create two examples showing different techniques and then you'll hopefully be totally inspired to start creating. With this first one, I'm showing how I'm not going over the whole thing. I'm just going to be partially adding the tape to it. And this gives a really different look to the cards and I love how they turn out. It was really fun to do. It uses up less tape as well so you get more cards done and hopefully you'll like this look as well. So I'll just pop it through my die cutting machine and then use my pokey tool to take out all the items. And 
This one, it doesn't matter if they're all over the place on the desk, it's pretty easy to figure out where each one goes. None of them are similar, so you don't have to worry about it so much. I've added the tape to a piece of white card again and so I can add the frame straight to it. And now tip when using any craft item is to always make sure it's in the most comfortable spot for you. I show here I'm fumbling when it's the correct way up and I felt I needed to turn it so I had more control. I'm not sure why but just never think that just because the finished product will be facing one way you have to create with it that way up. I hope that makes sense. I just felt much more comfortable doing this on the side. Oh, and the rest of the die cut pieces won't be wasted. I'll create another card with the opposite frame and outlines. So I'm using up more pieces with no extra die cutting. I did find the next day one of my sentiments didn't feel that secure with just my glue. I guess every glue can't stick everything down, but I added some double-sided tape, then the glue, and that sealed it onto the card perfectly. I know some of you have bought the same glue as me, so I wanted to let you know I found its kryptonite. For the heart on this card, I decided that I would emboss it so that it wasn't just plain white, but I didn't want to add more tape to it. And this was a really nice contrast. I forgot to mention this tape comes in washi tape too, so if you prefer a matte background rather than the glossy background, this will be a perfect option if you were doing this same thing. You could pop it down on white card and it would just give you a matte finish. And this tape is gilded too, so it has beautiful gold accents on it and it also does on the PET tape as well. Um, on the washi tape as well. Okay, no mucking around here. I'm straight on to this final technique and I've just glued three frames together with the pretty one on the top. Then I'll pop an acrylic block on the top of it for the glue to set well. And once it's set, I'll glue the frame and add it to a piece of card that's the same size as my card front. You can glue it straight to the card, but I just love extra layers and sturdiness. So I quite often do it this way. And once that's set in place, I can go ahead and add all the pieces. They're also three layers thick, so it really gives them that shiny mosaic tile look, and I love it. And to be honest, with this particular one, because I haven't used any solid colours, I feel like it's much more difficult to see the definition in the pieces when looking at it front on. I can't see the heart as well as I can on all the others, but if you look at it on an angle, you can see all the lovely pieces better. And it's really beautiful in real life. And I'm going to add a metallic teal sentiment with a white shadow to make that stand out against the background. So let's take a close look at all the cards and I'll start with the diagonal background cards first. I also have two extra little ideas coming. That's after the show of cards as well. This one was created with the same technique as the last card I made on the video. I used the frame as a guide to pop all the tiles in place. All the pieces are three layers thick again, so they look more like wooden pieces than paper pieces. I love using the gold frame as it brings attention to the gold in the PET tape. And I then created this card using the negatives from the last card. It's always fun to see how that goes. Plus, we're using throwaway pieces as well. I added the tape to light blue card for a different look. This background die is only $8.99 and the roll of tape is $11.95, which works out to cost $0.70 cents per card made today. And these prices I'm giving are without my discount codes, which will bring it down further. So if you love any of these products I've shown today, I have product links and discount codes in the description below. Use code LucyPatrick10 to receive 10% off your order at the Washi Tape Shop and use code Lucy25 for 25% off your order at In Love Arts. And I'll earn a small commission if you purchase through my links below. So thank you if you choose to use them. This really helps me continue creating my YouTube videos. And this next card was made the same as the second card here, but I wanted to show you how we could add a circle sentiment to the center as well. So I didn't attach a sentiment so I could show you both options. I'd love to hear what you liked best about this video today and whether it's given you any ideas. 
Then we move on to the next background die and this one is on sale at the moment from $12.99 to $7.99 but I'm not sure for how long. I just saw it on the website now. I created this card using the opposite pieces of the background die frames. I can't choose which looks better, can you? I created this one for a Canadian craft friend I met on Instagram. Hi Lisa, if you're watching. I used a random piece of teal pattern paper, which I thought goes beautifully with this tape. The pieces in this are all three layers thick, but the frame is only two layers. Ooh, next is very flashy with gold and metallic red card to create the framework. What do you think with two metallics? I love trialing different colors and textures together. I think this works, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. This card is a very different color palette using aqua and rose gold papers. These were so fun to create. Can you see why I couldn't stop experimenting? I heat embossed the numbers on this card using copper embossing powder. The frame is only one layer thick and the pieces are three layers thick. That tended to be my preferred layer amount, the three tiers, as it makes them look like tiles. I wish I could show you in real life as photos and videos just don't do them justice sometimes. And you can use any sentiment items you like. If you prefer stamping than die cutting or printed sentiments, my favorite is die cutting sentiments, especially in metallic colors as it always looks so professional and non-crafters don't understand how you could have done it as they don't know about die cutting. And this card you saw me make and I embossed the heart with an embossing folder and that's another really nice way to add texture to cards. I left the heart plain white. I felt like there was enough happening on this card. I really like how all of the cards turned out. There wasn't one where I thought, mm, no, not a fan. I liked them all. I used up some of my leftover pieces for this card using the heart. The papers I alternated which would go on the top layer and the other one was put underneath. Then I used my gel pen to doodle some borders. I love the heart on this one, it makes it so interesting. Another card using partial pieces of the tape and I love how giving it some white space makes it so refreshing. I love the metallic red frames and sentiments too. I'll have a link to where you can find metallic card as well as this is one of my must have items for luxurious looking cards. I just love it. Okay, look at this tiny little piece of tape I have left after 17 cards. We could just throw it away or I have two things I'm going to do with this one little piece. And let's first cut out that gorgeous flower. And PET tapes are so easy to cut. You just move the tape around rather than the scissors. It cuts like butter. So you do also have to be careful because you can cut straight through it. But most of the time you can pop it back together anyway and no one would ever notice. So then I'm going to slice it in half and then I'll roll it off the backing sheet and add it to the side of my envelope. And this way the recipient will know it's something lovely and not a bill. And then the other half can be popped inside the card for a sweet little decoration. And these aren't new ideas, but I thought I'd share them anyway. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating these cards. I really hope it's inspired you to see what you have in your stash or go shopping for new goodies and then create some fun, easy cards like this. It's really important to me that you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it as this shows YouTube it's a good video so they share it with more people and speaking of sharing, please let any of your craft friends or groups know about my channel. I have some really fun, beautiful card making videos coming soon. So click the notification bell if you don't want to miss them. And I also have some gift cards to give away too soon. And they're generous gift cards. That's all I can say. I have Instagram, Pinterest and a blog. And if interested, you can find the links in the description below too. So have an amazing day. Happy crafting and bye for now.